All right, we are here at the Bina Hot Box Detector, just east of Bakersfield. Just east, actually about 15 miles east of town. Start this off there. I've already had two trains uh, go by, and I saw this one coming down Sand Cut Hill, so I thought I would incorporate this train into my piece that I am going to do about hot box detectors. Something which I am not an expert on, but I do know a little bit about them. Nice heavy train. So DPU's here in the middle. This train was stopped up at Bina. That was the train right before it. When I got there, these trains are running them nose to tail. All right, well, I couldn't remember if this was a talk on defect only location. It obviously is. So that means that if there is no defect, this will not report over the radio. Some do, some don't. And uh, this one don't. But anyway, as I said, we are here at Bina. The high wide detector set up here has been decommissioned it is out of service as are um, is my understanding all the high wide detectors on the union pacific system i don't know how many they have uh, they only use them in uh, areas where they have tunnels so there's probably not a whole lot of them but they're leaving them in place it's my understanding in case they change their mind so anyway let's get into a little bit about the hot box detector itself. Okay, that cabin there is where all the control equipment is. It operates this location. 
the uh, hot box and hot wheel detector, the Dragon Equipment Detector, and formerly a high wide detector, which is a good thing that's out of service as I mentioned, because that one has obviously been struck by something and has been destroyed. But uh, anyway, I will put a link in the description below of the piece I did on wayside detectors, where I get into a lot more detail about the inner workings of this stuff. This is going to be a relatively short video. I just want to uh, hit on some of the uh, specifics about a hotbox detector. All right, I have moved to the other side of the tracks. The reason for that is, you can see the signals down there. They are not lit, which means there are no trains cleared in either direction. So for right now, even though I'm not fouling the tracks, I know that there is nothing coming. I can keep an eye on those signals. And not only that, there are crossings on either side of me here where I can hear the trains. I believe there is work going on up around, must be up around Illman. I can hear the trains sounding their horns as they go by that with the double honks through a work zone. But anyway, I'm not fouling the tracks. The way this works, basically, is there is a short range circuit that goes out both directions. And when a train occupies that circuit it turns the equipment on inside that cabin here and as far as the hot box detector goes there are uh, doors in these little holes right there that are normally closed those open when the circuit is occupied when the machine turns everything on emits an infrared beam that is aimed at the ends of the axles where the journals are and starts measuring their heat. Right there you see the transducers bolted to the rail there and they're only on one rail. That is what counts the axles. As the wheels go across the top of those it counts each axle and if there is an issue, if one of the journals is hot or one of the wheels is hot that will send a radio announcement out on the road channel that tells the crew on the train that there is a problem with a specific axle. They will then bring the train to a stop and they will have to get out and inspect, walk back here. Uh, sometimes we have around here what's called a rapid responder. If he's, if he's close, he can come back and do that, but they have to count they have to count the axles back to where the bad axle is and see if there's actually a problem. Uh, generally, they don't take chances. They will just take the car up and set it out at the closest uh, spur track, which in this case is going that way, is up at Caliente. Going that way is down in Bakersfield. Now, one of the things I don't know is once that happens, I'm not sure if they have to travel at restricted speed or not. That is probably set out in the timetable or and or in the special system instructions, which I will be doing a piece on the timetables uh, here very soon. But uh, anyway... They'll figure out whether or not there's a problem with an axle and they will take the car, set it out, and then be on their way. The reason that I did this video, first off, was that after the East Palestine derailment in Ohio, uh, one of the talking points became hot box detectors and uh, how they worked and where they are. These ones around here are about every 20 miles as practicable. They are pretty pretty evenly spaced. Now back uh, on the Norfolk Southern, as I've said dozens of times, I am not familiar with the way other railroads do things. I'm only familiar with what Union Pacific does, and in a lot of cases I'm only familiar with what Union Pacific does or did in my corner of the world while I was working. But in the uh, fallout of the East Palestine derailment, I, 
I read the uh, NTSB preliminary report on the the deal in Ohio, and uh, I can't remember what their upper limit was to fire the uh, detector. Uh, I was gonna I googled it, but I'm in a place right now where I have absolutely no signal, so I couldn't do it. So if you know, drop in the comments below. I'm sure plenty of you do. But Union Pacific, prior to the East Palestine derailment, their upper limit was 190 degrees above ambient temperature. They have since reduced that to 170 degrees above ambient temperature. Uh, make it a little safer, catch things a little earlier. And uh, I just... I found that out this morning spoke to a friend of mine who's still working let me know that it's about this I don't know if I mentioned it in, in the uh, video that I did about this or a few years ago but there is also a differential between that that checks the temperature difference between the ends of the axle for each journal on each axle uh, but that won't stop a train. All that does is give what's called an, an integrity failure. And if there are any other issues out here that uh, a, a broken wire, something uh, goes wrong with one of the uh, machines inside the uh, cabin, that's what it will do. It will give a train an integrity failure. That message will go out over the, the uh, radio. And for the most part, trains will... Uh, either slow to a uh, predetermined speed again I didn't look that up it's probably listed somewhere but uh, they will slow down until they go by the next detector that clears them now if, if the next set detector does an integrity failure too I honestly don't know what they do maybe they have to stop I don't know if you do let me know in the comments below but anyway uh, I just wanted to bring this to you and one of the other reasons that I've done this how things work video is because I did a poll over on my patreon channel and asked the patrons I gave them a list of types of videos uh, that they would like to see and uh, the overwhelming all ten of them the overwhelming majority wanted to see more how things work videos so I will try to put together some more of those here are the URLs to my PayPal and my patreon account if you want to go over and become a patron uh, get uh, early access to videos uh, behind the scenes stuff uh, polls things like that uh, I'm gonna keep doing that for a while right now I still don't have very many patrons we'll see how that goes but it sure would help me if you would uh, if you could do that but anyway Keep shooting me the ideas. Drop in the comments below. Shoot me an email at motorport59 at gmail.com. Like, share, subscribe. Click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content. And we'll see you all later.